bright and early, by the way. That is JP Morosi, who joins us from Seoul. It's 8 a.m. ish in Seoul, South Korea. JP, how, I'll, I'm trying not to yell because I know you're halfway across the world. How are you doing, JP? How's everything there? <laughs> BK. I, I love greeting you guys here this morning, as you mentioned, in, in Seoul, South Korea. Evening, of course, your time having a great trip so far. Everything pointing towards now the Wednesday and Thursday regular season games. Games that count are coming up here at the Gochok Skydo. Excellent. Let's talk a little Dodgers baseball. Now, you tell us the depth of this story then that we hear the Dodgers are considering once the surgery is done and his arm is good, that the possibility, is there a possibility Shohei Otani could be playing the outfield this year for L.A.? Well, this made news yesterday here in Seoul as Dave Roberts was answering questions about Shohei and, and somewhat casually acknowledged that once the Dodgers return to North America, that Otani is going to begin his throwing program. And that certainly got a lot of attention because all things Shohei generate news. And so in this case, now we know that he's going to begin his throwing program. And Dave did say that depending on how things go with that throwing program, that later on in the year, it could become an option for him to play in the field. Now, he does have some limited experience as an outfielder while playing in Japan, so that is a part of his toolkit, so to speak. The focus, obviously, for the Dodgers is twofold. Have him be your DH and then make sure that he can pitch in 2025. Dave Roberts made clear that he is not a candidate to pitch this year. That's a pretty important point to emphasize and underscore here. There has been some reported thought that perhaps he could face hitters as part of his throwing progression later on in the year, but not in a competitive setting. So it does really open up a lot of options. And when you think about it, BK, the, the fact that Otani is your everyday DH does prevent you right now from giving rest days to guys like Freeman and Betts who are in there every day. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make some sense from a lineup structure standpoint. It does afford Dave Roberts more flexibility if Shohei could have a day in a corner outfield spot or even potentially first base, although the outfield is probably more likely sometime in the second half. Interesting. No, we had to look it up. I didn't even realize he played several innings for the Angels in the outfield. Didn't get a chance. Didn't get the ball out there. I'd imagine he'd be able to field. It's a matter of throwing. We'll discuss that in a moment. First, though, we saw Gavin Stone in the highlights. Um, I think it's interesting that we're going to hear a lot about young pitchers, even though this is a behemoth, right? This is the, the ultimate super team in the Dodgers, they will be relying on some young pitchers. What's Stone's role in all of this? That's an excellent point, BK, and that was the news last night here in Seoul. Gavin Stone named the Dodgers number five starter, as Yonder previewed a moment ago, and when you watched him pitch last night, it was clear, as the guys were mentioning, that changeup was electrifying. There it is, to get lefties out. His fastball command, and Dave Roberts talked about this last night, too, has really gotten better. So as the fastball command, the mound presence, the physical maturity has improved, it's really allowed him to take hold now of that fifth spot. Now, James Paxton right now is still in Arizona getting ready for his first start of the regular season. You see Yarborough and Grove as potential depth options. And then it's a veritable all-star team on the right-hand side of your screen yeah. of pitchers who are injured. And so the hope is that even though Glass now, who's their opening day starter, has not been someone that has gone 200 innings, the concern is actually just let's get us through the first half because in the second half you expect to have more contributions from the likes of, of Kershaw and certainly Walker Buehler by the time the middle of the season rolls around. There was also some news on the San Diego side of things yesterday as Dylan Cease makes his Padres debut wearing number 84, and he does it in Seoul, South Korea. I thought his stuff was very good. He did give up a solo homer, but I was very impressed by Cease. As Mike Schultz said afterward, I just got a lot smarter and now having Dylan Cease on my ball club. And, and you think about the Padres, and for as much as their offseason was scrutinized with the Soto trade and, and losing Josh Hader, their top three, Darvish, who starts opening day, Musgrove, and now Cease with a good group of young starters, including some they, they obtained from the Yankees in the Soto trade. So I really believe, BK, the Padres are an underrated contender entering 2024. Yeah, there's more wins to go around in the National League, actually, right? So the, the, the possibility of looking at one of those wild card spots uh, it seems a little more realistic, although that you'd figure the Dodgers 
are, are going to grab that division. It is amazing. You're right. That right side of the screen, just the injured Dodgers list. It reminds me of like the Premier League teams when they go on some billion dollar binge and they buy two clubs. We're talking soccer, but you know what I'm talking about. Right. So, hey, we have two all-star teams. We hope they're good. Last thing, I would imagine, speaking of the Padres, that Hassan Kim is an immense superstar in Korea. Is that the case? He really is. The response for Hassan Kim here in Seoul has been extraordinary. And BK, you cannot write a script like the one that Hassan Kim delivered yesterday. He is playing at the Gochok Sky Dome. That's the place where he played for the Kiwoom Heroes. That's his old home ballpark. Two home runs, BK, that he hit against the LG Twins. And that man right there, Young Yu Byum, is his original manager with the Kiwoom Heroes. So his very first manager in the major leagues was in the opposing dugout yesterday <laughs> when, when the Padres met the LG Twins, who are the reigning champions of KBO. They actually have a Casey Kelly on their roster, of course, former Padre and Red Sox right-hander. But for, for Hassan to speak after the game about the meaning of having a game like that, and most importantly, to do so with his manager, Yume, his longtime manager, and someone that he credits as the person who raised him in the game and made him the player player that he is it all happened in Seoul yesterday a two homer game for the local hero and national hero Hassan Kim yeah, yeah he's it just makes me think he's such a good representative of Korean baseball you know John right because he's such a good all-around player a pleasure to watch and but I imagine like I probably can't walk the streets <laughs> back in Korea just too right. too big a star uh, JP thanks for being up early I know you got your workout in you got breakfast in already and everything but we appreciate you getting up early in Korea thank you so much my pleasure we can call it MLB tonight MLB morning over here it's perfect <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to join you as always BK thank you all right thank you John